Welcome back. As we've promised, promoted, we have Wellington Mayor Tori Fano in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Can you get a little bit closer to your microphone? How's please? that? Yeah, perfect. She's standing. She's standing over me just for people. Maybe lift the microphone a little bit higher. Perfect. Uh, right. According to the latest poll released over the weekend, you have the lowest approval rating of any mayor in the country, and there's 37 of them. You said you were close to a deal with Reading and it's going to be signed? Not. You said you had spoken to Mark Denaycek and kept him up to date with the negotiation? He said you didn't. He said you're running as an independent, you weren't renewing your Green membership, now you've renewed your Green membership and are an active member of the Greens. Can you explain to me and people of Wellington how we can possibly trust you <laughs> after that? Okay, so... Let's go to the Green Party membership. So I, from the very beginning, I'd always said that I would pause it. For the no, per- you didn't. No, I did. I, did. I never, ever. I mean, we had lots I, maybe of conversations. Maybe I didn't say it to you, but I okay. certainly said it to media. That I was, and I told the party this, that I would pause my membership. But you ran as an independent. Yeah, I did. And I still am an independent. You're not. Yes, I am. You're a I'm, member of the Green okay. Party. No, and I was a member of the Green Party when I ran. So, and I think this comes down to a lack of understanding around party membership. So, so you so, hadn't got rid of your membership like you said but you said you had okay let me explain nick so i I was a green party member all through my campaign and i was green party endorsed but i was still an independent mayor when i became mayor i remained independent but i paused my membership when it came up for renewal because i had a couple of councillors who were like we don't really trust party aligned uh, councillors and i'm like cool i'm going to pause it for a bit and work on my relationship with you and i've done that so, uh, so you're now telling us the relationship with the council members are better because you're a member of the Green Party? No. Uh, so, no, my relationship is better with them because I can see that I can actually remain as an independent mayor, which I'm still an independent mayor. I'm independent. But, you I know, have, we know that doesn't work. We can't. Yes, it, do, can't. it does. It does. I, I'm working on policies that don't align with Green Party policy. Um, I don't go to Green Party meetings. Corey, you either have sugar in your coffee or you don't. So you're either going to believe me or you're not. So I'm telling you, I've, I've been a Green Party member for 10 years. I paused it for one year to build my relationship with, with certain councillors. I've done that. Now I'm ready to go back to the Green Party as a member, but remain as an independent mayor. What do you say to people like me that may have voted for you because you were an independent? I'm still an independent. Okay. So what you're t- what you're okay, showing I'm, me I'm, is that yeah, you I'm, don't I'm, understand how this works. I, I don't telling, understand, yeah, exactly. and I don't think people of Wellington understand. No, either. exactly. And okay. and so what I'm making. So if the Green Party clear, ring you and and do an Iona panel on you, if the Green Party ring you and say, Iona, I want you to vote this way for something, and she doesn't vote, and then cuts her out. Will you will you accept that they could cut you out as yes, well? Yes, absolutely. If you okay. So you'll vote as Tory Farno, not Tory as Fano the Green the Party. Mayor. I am looking for the best outcomes for the city. Um, the, the, the Green Party, they've accepted my membership. They absolutely know that they cannot tell me how to vote. Okay. So they don't. Why do you think that your approval rate rating is so low? I mean, bottom. A couple of reasons. So last year was a hard year, publicly for me. I went through a lot of things, and that was put, over, that was put through, you know, country news, national news. That's never really going to be... Um, great for approval ratings for any mayor. So that I've accepted. So I've spent the last few months just getting on top of things and it's been really great. Do you think things have changed? Absolutely. Do you think your relationship with the council and your relationship with the people of Wellington has changed? Do you for think most you've... of them, yes. Not everyone, but for most of them. Um, and so, th- look, there's all the personal stuff um, that was put out into the news, but actually it's, it's, started to, it's really come right and it's really great. I'll also say that Wellington Council have more media scrutiny um, than any other council except for Auckland. So we, we have similar problems to every other city, but we just we have a microscope on us. So we're always in the news. It's always negative, but actually it's not dissimilar to what other councils are going through. Um, it's really hard. Um, we are going through a tough time. We're, we're in the process of fixing our pipes. We are, we are pushing through significant changes. That means construction around the city. Of course, who do you want to blame? The mayor, council. And I accept that. I completely you, accept that. You keep talking about your relationship and wanting to build the relationship with the councillors. We know on the show there's councillors that you haven't spoken to for ages, have nothing to do with. Completely not true. It is completely untrue. 
I spoke uh-huh. to all of them last week. Okay, individually? Yeah. So you'd go and have a coffee with Diane Calvert? You'd go and have a coffee with... I had one with, with uh, Diane last Thursday, okay. Wednesday. All right. So I, I, I'm assuming you're hearing from people who not exactly up with the truth, but I am completely open and offer myself to meet with councillors constantly. I meet with, I've started meeting with Diane on a like fortnightly basis. Um, I've certainly offered it to her. She 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 doesn't really come to council, so that that's on her. People are adults, they have to take some responsibility. I offer them meetings, it's up to them if they take it or not. They cannot come in here and blame me for not meeting with them when they do not take up meetings. Great. I'm kind of stuck on this green thing because I feel that you may be looking to run for parliament with the Greens. Is that, can you categorically tell us that? 100% not true. And in fact, so I actually joined the Greens a while ago. Um, so they were going through a really tough time and I thought I wanted to help the party because it, it's, it's really unsettling. We had an MP die and that is quite devastating for a party. So I thought I want to join, um, become family again for our members. What people don't understand, like it, it is the absolute nerdiest thing to join a political party. And I totally get that. And a lot of people think we're joining a cult or a, or a church or whatever, and they tell us what to do. It's not the case. So I've been a member with the Greens for about 10 years. I consider them my family. I have no family here in Wellington. I need a supportive network because this is a very, very hard and lonely job. And they are always there for me. So it's actually more of a social. So it is thing. like a cult. Well, I'm, I mean, it depends on the definition of a cult. but <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, it. it's, it's a social thing. What do you think is your greatest claim to fame? What do you think you've delivered in your time? Now, it's nearly 18 months, isn't it? I mean, it's 15, 16 months. It's half, almost halfway through. What do you think you've delivered? I mean, it's really difficult. So a couple of moments that I have been proud of, actually. So um, getting through the Golden Mile a year ago, that was a really, really tough decision, but we got it through. Working with central government to keep it on our agenda. So that's, the work's going to start on that this year. I'm deeply proud of that. Um, and then working through... Um, I'm deeply hoping. terrified of it. Pardon? I'm deeply terrified of it. I'm, I, and I'm sh- there are some... There, some people are, but it was something I campaigned on and something that I will deliver uh, before the end of this term. OK, we will talk about the Golden Mile later in the show, so I won't go into that too. I want to know if you're actually going to promise people of Wellington that you're going to run again as mayor next election. I promise. OK. I've actually already um, started looking for a campaign manager already. So I'm 100% committed to running again, and um, I'd be devastated if I didn't get back in. Okay, let's take a short break and be back with Tori Fano. She will take your calls and questions, 0800 80 10 80. Please keep them on topic. Don't, I don't want to hear about stuff that we're not talking about, so let's keep it on topic. But 0800 80 10 80, if you'd like to ask Mayor Tori Fano a question. Wellington Mayor Tori Fano in the studio. Let's talk... Reading Cinema's deal. Mm. We've talked several times on the show about the deal. You've always said it's almost there. In fact, you have a, a step in, in your step, you know, a jump in your step when you talk about it. It's always been exciting. I think we've had three different conversations at three different yeah. times and it's just about there and it's yeah. all done and it's yeah. going to be great for the city. Where do we go now? Okay, so deal is now off the cards for council. And I'll admit, you know, I'm devastated and, and disappointed and I know... Um, others are too, but also lots of people are happy that, it, that it's not going ahead. Fine. It is now. Well, I think our, they're happy with the idea that they don't have to pay, their money doesn't come out of their rates. It, well, it wasn't going to, but look, yeah, you that, know that argument mean. is in the, in okay. the past. Yep. The problem is now it's out of council's hands. The only thing that council can do is an increase uh, rating on the land, which is what we're proposing um, in the long term plan by increasing rates by 5% to encourage. Um, you know, developers not to sit on um, derelict buildings. But in terms of revitalising Reading, we have absolutely no hand in it. Okay. What does this whole total exercise cost us? And don't say you don't know. You'll have a very good idea of what it cost us. Oh, staff, staff hours, staff time. So, of course... Mm. Well, um, you've got to have, you know, lawyers and accountants and stuff. To, and come our, on. our internal lawyers. You reckon yep. it's cost us a million dollars? No. Oh, absolutely not. No. I don't... I don't know who told you that, but that's... Ballpark figure? No. Uh, well, I, I can't calculate staff hours, but we had a whole team who was working on the negotiation for the last few months, so... Outsiders? Consultants? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. 
who put the whole deal together? Whose idea was it that, that the council could buy the land off them? And who, who put it to them? Did they come to us or did you go to them? Let me go back. I mean, the deal was almost done in your first week. So it no, can't it have wasn't. been. Well, you, I it remember absolutely you. Absolutely wasn't. Oh, wasn't it? No. Oh, okay. And it's like, you know, people talk about. Well, you that dined dinner. them and wined them and dined them when you, when it was, you were it was very. A, early. No, I didn't. So oh, okay. they were already here to meet with the finance minister and other Wellington MPs okay. just to suss the city out because they were, they were looking at different developments around the world and Wellington was one of them. It was like okay. a big recce trip. So who approached who first about getting the dollars? So in terms of um, getting the dollars, so this kind of idea has been in the making, in my understanding, for, for years. Yeah, but who, who's, did they come to you and say, we're not going to do the deal unless we get 36, 32 million, or did you go to them or someone from the council go to them and say, let's, let's see how we can make this creatively look and work? I've got to be honest, I, I, I believe it was them, but I, I, can't, I cannot right. recall, sorry. Was Barbara Macero, the CEO of Wellington City Council, involved in this whole negotiation? Right from day one? Was it her baby? Was she involved? Um, no, it wasn't her baby. It was her team's um, baby kind of put together. So what happened was um, these sort of terms were discussed between um, Reading and uh, council staff. Then it was brought to council for a, um, PX, a in PX vote and we agreed to certain terms and then we fully delegated it uh, to our internal team to c- uh, conduct the negotiations and get an agreement. So Who the agreement was ultimately concluded the deal was a dud and it wasn't going to work out and should be walked away from? So our internal staff, so the ones in charge of the negotiation, so after a period of time... Did they come to you and say, we think it's a dud? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, But the decision, yeah, so that they their advice to uh, the CEO is, you know, we can't proceed with this deal because we can't get the best outcome for Wellingtonians and um, and what we had discussed right in the beginning. Where or what was the stumbling block? Oh, I mean... That that's a very commercially sensitive detail, which I cannot discuss for legal reasons. Why didn't you take Mark Deny check up on his offer seriously? Why didn't you treat him seriously? So we did actually. Um, we he presented his his offer like the night before the vote. So we had to proceed with, with the vote anyway. But we still connected um, Sir Mark and his team with Reading. Reading did not want to engage. They did not. And but now that we've pulled out. We've put them in touch again, and we're hoping that they can come to an agreement. It's now over to them. Okay. Do you think you personally or your council or your organisation treated Sir Mark Denayacek with the respect that he was due? Oh, absolutely. So we He had, doesn't think you did. Well, I, I'm not quite sure why. So we, he, he did have a couple of meetings with our internal team. We had we, we had a couple of councillors, Councillor Brown and Councillor McNulty, also meet with him. We were still proceeding with negotiations directly with Reading. That had to proceed because we voted it through twice. Um, perhaps he wanted us to stop the deal and go straight to him. We couldn't do that. We were in negotiations. Now we're like, if the offer still stands, um, we, we implore you to work directly with Reading. We can't be involved because, again, Reading are the owners of the building and the land, and I really hope that they can come to an agreement. The deal is completely off the caper. We know that now. We've now got a serious issue with a rotting monstrosity of a building in the middle of Courtney Place, and yep. you're trying to spend a whole lot more million dollars on building this golden mile when you've still got this rotting, yeah, horrible old building in the middle of it. Yes. I can't let um, you know an old rotting building stop us from creating progress everywhere else. And, and, and again, I really hope that Reading do find another partner to work with to revitalise that building. It is no longer council's responsibility. Okay. Um, so let's hope something happens there. Would they sell it? Has anyone suggested that they yeah. sell it and get yes, out? Absolutely. Okay. They don't want to sell it. They do not want to sell it. No. Now that they're not getting $32 million, oh, will they change their I mean, tune on that? Maybe, maybe. But again, it's, it's no longer council's business. So council will now focus on other parts of the city that we do have responsibility over, which is the Golden Mile, uh, places like Tengako, Library Town. Golden Mile will be an absolute dud if that building is still there. I, it doesn't help. But, I mean, think about it. People like yourself and other businesses complain constantly about how dire Courtney Place is. Yep. So you either want progress or you don't. I can't not proceed with reading and not do Golden Mile. Okay. I have to do something. All right. We've got a caller now, Lance. Um, Lance, good morning, Lance. You've got a question on the Golden Mile for Mayor Tori Farno. Yeah, g'day, Tori. I remember when you first Sorry, came. Sorry. Hold on, hold on, Lance. We have to put, I have to put some headphones uh, on. Have you got sorry. some headphones? Are those headphones connected? Hold on one second. That's bad of us. Righto, Lance. You're my, right. my bad. Here we go. Yeah, I remember when you 
first came in as mayor and um, Nick interviewed you and there was uh, contention about the um, pedestrian crossing by the airport. Yes. And you had said categorically on the radio that you would listen to the uh, ratepayers of Wellington and we felt we weren't being listened to because 91% were against it. What's the percentage of ratepayers in Wellington that are against the Golden Mile? Uh, it's about, half, it's because, about half and half. And where's that number come from? Because come- based, on, based on what I hear, what I read uh, in the Dom Post, what I hear on Nick's wonderful show, is that the majority are against it. You've got businesses closing. So why yep. don't you listen? So I why do don't it- you listen? Why don't you listen? If you let me answer, so I do it based on data that's collected through consultation, um, and I also do it through other things like the fact that I campaigned on the Golden Mile, the fact that Green MPs and Green councillors and Labour MPs and Labour councillors campaigned on the Golden Mile, and they were um, they were elected with a strong majority. Um, I understand you might see and read things in the media. I'm not entirely sure that's based on fact. You know, Tori, the, the problem that a lot of us have is that you were exactly the same with Reading, you know? So, and now we see that's gone. Yeah, in a exactly. Complete and aren't you so, pleased? Uh, no, I'm pleased that we're not forking out $32 million for a failing American company. That's what I'm pleased about. And that's what a lot of Wellingtonians are pleased about. We want Wellington to be Wellington. Yeah, not right. thirty-two million to an American. Yep, company. and now, and now we will ha- we have an American-owned building there that's just going to sit there rotting for the next twenty years. Well, you can change the law and make them. No, them I can't it. change the law. That'll have to be a government initiative. We can't rely on that. This deal was a way to revitalise that building. Now it's not going to. So I will focus on projects like the Golden Mile. Okay, take a short break and be back with Tori Fano. It is twenty-seven minutes past eleven. Thanks very much, Max. Wellington Mornings with Tori Fano in the studio. She does once a month taking your calls. John is on the line and wants to ask. John, good morning. You've got a question for Mayor Tori Fano about Thorndon. Yes, um, that's a complete shambles down there. The, there's a bed shop down there. I went down the other week. I couldn't get a park anywhere. Couldn't even walk in the shop. What's going on? Do you, uh, Tory? do you get out and have a look what's going on in the city? Or do you just do it from a computer? <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually live in the city, uh, so I, I, and I walk everywhere. And I know at the moment it's, it's going through that transition construction period. And it is, it is really messy, and I, and I get it. And there have been a couple of times that um, our contractors have blocked off areas that they shouldn't have. Um, so I'm meeting with a few uh, Thorndon businesses uh, in the next few days to kind of talk that through um, and get one of our planners there as well to see if we can kind of provide some ease somewhere. Have you actually walked down and had a look or driven down and had a look at it? I mean, yeah. it's a nightmare. Uh, I mean, I have. And even I'll admit it's a bit of a maze. A maze? Uh, yep. It's uh, a friggin' nightmare. Yep. And, 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 I, and I know that. So I have committed to sitting down with a few people and seeing how we can, again, provide some ease somewhere. Okay. Glenn, you've got a uh, question for Mayor Tori Fano. Yeah, based on what you just said, Glenn, I find it absolutely objectionable that you have got a major problem down in Thorndon and you're about to open up Lambton Key. So my question to you this morning, Tori, is that the cost of Lambton Key, has it been peer-reviewed? Based on the cost that you've incurred with the town hall, I feel that the whole process is questionable. So it certainly will be. the So what, what we've done is we've taken the Golden Mile, Mile project and split it into two because we know uh, we need to phase it appropriately. So Courtney Place will be the first cab off the rank. Um, Lambton Key has been delayed actually by several years to ensure that we get the di- design of that correct um, and that we get the funding correct and get it reviewed. So uh, the answer is yes. Why couldn't you have done the other way around? Why can't you start at Lambton Key and then because, come back? Because the people told us to start with Courtney Place. Barry uh, Barry Wilson is the convener of, uh, what is it, Save Our City. Uh, he's on the line. He's got a question for Mayor Tori Fano. Good morning, Barry. Good morning. Good morning, Mick. Good morning, Tori. Good morning. Tori, I'd like, I'd like to correct some figures you gave. The 50-50 poll does not exist, and that's absolutely a just spin. 
Uh, it's we not, had a it was poll. part of um, consultation. No, I'm sorry, so Eric, it's not I'm sorry. Been... Your Majesty, would you listen? The fact is, we had a courier poll done, highly reputable, 68% was opposed to the Golden Mile. Radio Live, oh, Wellington Live did one, 90% opposed to the poll. We have done a straw poll in Courtney Place this weekend where lots of posts uh, have gone up. And what we know down there is there's 90% opposition of retailers to the Golden Mile. The chaos, the havoc of construction, two years. What's your question, Barry? The question is, is Tory understanding of the fact that the Golden Mile is not an intervention that's beneficial, it's a disbenefit. What was the question on that? I didn't get the question. No, I'm not. So, I mean, we know that Barry has long campaigned against the Golden Mile. Um, some of the polls that has ran have, have been with very leading questions that were actually not quite accurate. So the question, I believe, of one of them was, do you agree with banning all cars um, from the city centre, including um, those for loading, blah, blah, blah. That that was a very leading question. So I, actually the research that he presents to council, I completely disagree with. Okay. You you don't think that there is a great disdain for the Golden Mile on Court? I, I, I absolutely do think that there are uh, there is certainly um, people who don't think we should go ahead with it, and I, and I get that. And through this, um, when it was with Let's Get Wellington Moving, we made some changes to the Golden Mile to help um, certain businesses. So we included um, loading zones. We included disability parks. We're still working through that project to see we can provide some ease. But again, if we do nothing, what are you going to do for the people? Dies. What are you going to do for the people? And I put myself in there, so I, I, I put my uh, uh, self out there to tell you that I, I, I am one of those businesses that could possibly go broke when you build this. And we committed in the break to go for a walk, have a bit of a chat and talk about what you could do because I, I, I do have some anxiety around that, around what, what it's going to do to business owners. I know, I know there are full lease signs and windows. So for me, it's we can't leave as is because we know that's not working for the city at the moment. So what is the solution? Still very willing to talk to businesses about but other points. That's, that's where we have this big raft. We have all the talk that they want to meet with businesses and want to work with business. Lambton Key, Thorndon, I'm not just saying, you know, Courtney Place, but no one seems to get anything out of it. I do think that now that we've bought the Golden Mile project in-house, so we're going through a transition at the moment, we're changing over staff, it has left, Let's get, it's left the Let's Get Wellington moving team, it is now in council. We're going to have much more direct engagement. I've also got a mural um, business group who are also going to be advising on this project as well. Okay, take a short break and be back with some more questions for Tori Fano. It's 22 minutes to 12. Corey, what are you thinking when you hear about the mega tunnel proposal? What are your thoughts on this proposal? Is it something that Wellington needs? So when I first heard about it, I thought it was quite um, quite an extreme solution to, to um, a problem that we have. So um, I certainly agree with the Minister in um, having to divert traffic away from places like Cuba and Vivian to make it more pedestrian friendly wholeheartedly support that but I, I just wonder if it could be done in a because uh, it's my, a 20 year plan it's it? a 20 year plan it's quite expensive um, I would rather that get put into infrastructure first um, and then perhaps we can look at that but uh, we're in early, I'm in early discussions with the minister and we've talked about things like what, what what's the urban development plan as a, as a result but I do wonder if there are other Okay. Solutions. What's your take on the feeling? Well, what's your, what are you feeling about really? The government's move to earthquake prone buildings loan scheme pull pull that. I mean, that's something that's pretty important to a lot of Wellingtonians. It is. So um, it's a shame, but I will say this. So I've, I've met with um, Minister Pink, and I think we have another meeting in a couple of days to talk about the terms of reference about the review. He's been really uh, quite proactive and um, really responsive. Uh, the fact that he's agreed to a review and the and the extension. Um, of some of the ratings I think is hugely positive. So he has listened um, to Wellingtonians, but um, it's a shame about the loan, but I think there are other positive things that could come out of this. But people need the money. These are older people. That, you know, oh, I mean, I completely agree. And um, I'm whole, I wholeheartedly support um, the loans, but um, I'm hoping this review might come up with something else. Let's quickly talk about the mood of the city. We, uh, on this show, get it all the time that the general mood of the city uh, is on a downward spiral, mm. combining public service cuts, the re recession at the moment, just the general mood of the city. I know we've had some great events and they've been fantastic, but the mood of the city is feeling like it's on a downward spiral. What does it feel to you 
in your office? Yeah, about the same because it's like we have public service cuts, we have media cuts as well, and there are also other sectors that are taking a hit. Mm. So this is this feeling's probably going to going to continue for some time, um, and I think we just have to. When I meet with the government um, next week, or was it week after? We're going to talk about well, what is the forward plan uh, for investment in this city? What is the forward plan with these public service cuts? Because um, that will impact our economy. It's not going to be great. Um, I think I read a really great op-ed um, in the Post Sunday Star Times from Alex Matthews about Wellington as well as the rest of the country. It's not just unique to Wellington. We're going through tough times. It's really recession vibes um, hitting strong. Um, we almost have to accept that some of that's going to happen and it won't improve for another year or so. Um, we have to continue investing in our city and making it better. We need more support from central government. Um, but as a community, we, we do have to remember what's great about Wellington and kind of keep keep that going. But I, even I, I know Should we be concerned? Tough. Should we? Uh, I mean, concerned about what? Well, we should we be concerned if we're living here, our rates are going up, the city feels like it's on a bit of a downer. What, you know, should we be concerned? No, I think because again, it's happening everywhere. Um, I think it's about accepting, much like we did, I think it was in 2006, we're going to go through a really tough time. All of us are. Tell me about your thoughts on airport sale, the sale of the airport shares. You said not being a member of the Green Party gave you more freedom to advocate for things like the sale of the council stake in Wellington Airport. What's changed? Has anything changed? No. With that? no. What do you want to do with it? Oh, so I can't say because of predetermination, right? But what I will say is that we have a massive... Um, insurance issue. We hold a lot of risk um, and by holding on to certain assets, um, if there were to be a disaster, we'd be liable for $3 billion. Um, we'd need to be, be able to access funds very quickly to help put our city back on track. Now I heard exactly the same thing from Tim Brown yep. um, and you know, I believe he's got a bit of a conflict because he's got a history with the airport. Yep. Um, are you being um, uh, pushed that way by him? No, 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 not at all. He's certainly... But, I mean, that's exactly his word verbatim about having the assets and no yep, insurance and all that. Because that's the wording in the long-term plan. That's exactly how we have to describe it as the problem. Um, and so, you know, we do need to be able to access that amount of money very quickly. We couldn't if it's holding just the airport. So we're asking the public, do you mind if it's recycled into another asset? We kind of get the feeling or know that Labour Council has ramped up their opposition to it. What do you make of this? Unsurprising. You know, they, they don't like asset sales. That is their right. Um, they're encouraging people to submit on the LTP. Um, and look, I, I'm just going to wait until the consultation period is over. If we have an overwhelming response saying, don't sell the airport, we, we most likely won't. That does leave us, though, with this big insurance issue, which we've um, I brought up with uh, Minister Willis um, the other week, so she is aware of it. Um, and we just we just have to see how this goes. What's what's the development in Civic Square? Tell us about that and tell us how big it is and how major it is for the Civic Square. It's really great. So at the moment in our Civic Square, which includes um, the Town Hall and um, our library, our library will, will be done in 2026. The Town Hall will be done in 2027. Um, the buildings in between have to be demolished because they're in such a state. And we've partnered with um, Precinct, who have done Commercial Bay, to really develop that into a lively building, which includes um, some civic functions, uh, businesses, co-working spaces. I mean, that, that's yet to be decided with council, but it's hugely positive. And um, the council carries uh, no risk, no cost. Okay. Take a short break and come back and wrap with Mayor Tori Fano. It's Wellington Mornings and it's 13 minutes to 12. News Talk ZB, Wellington Mornings, Tori Fano, uh, met Wellington Mayor uh, in, the, in the studio. I'm trying to organise to have a catch up with her to go and show her around um, Courtney Place and the Gold Mile I've walked from end to end so we can show her exactly how dire the situation is. I want to talk to you because a lot of people have been contacting us about the band Rotunda, the old fisherman's mm. table on Oriental Bay. Now, uh, Maurice Clark or his, one of his organisations, who's done a wonderful and amazing amount of stuff for Wellington, and I think he's a very, you know, amazing man, uh, has started put, well, there's no signage up. He was the guy that signed the contract. Now there's no signage up whatsoever. So has he walked? Uh, not to my knowledge. 
So I think we talked about this a few months ago and um, all I know is that they're still in some sort of agreement to um, to rebuild an earthquake strengthen that building. I've heard nothing further since, but I'll but I'll you know I've already sent my stuff an email. And I had a couple of uh, people call me during the week about who polices the cycleways. Now, there's this, apparently there was a couple of cycles that banged into each other, uh, and one of them said to the other one, "Well, who, who's right? Who's wrong? Does anyone policing cycleways? Um, does, is that the police traffic job to do, or is it the, the meter guy who does that?" I'm uh, for for things like crashes. Yeah, I don't know to be honest. No, I don't know either. I, I, just thought, I yeah. thought you would know because I know we have counters and data collection of of cycleway usage, but in ser- in terms of watching the cycleways, I'm not too sure. Okay. And another one I wanted to ask you, on a Monday night, is it necessary to have a parking warden, this is a personal one, so I'll tell you, on side streets in Wellington at 7 o'clock on a Monday night when there's very few people around? Is that kind of counterproductive? I mean, they are just doing their job. I know they're doing their job, <laughs> but why don't they do it during the day, you know, and not night times when people are going out and doing something like going to have dinner or something? I feel your frustration, but I can't. I yeah, can't. Okay. I can't say. You know, you're not going to do your job. I'm not going to do that. What have you got on? What What's going to make Wellington better? What do you give me? One thing that you're going to do before the next time we meet, and you're going to say, "See, Nick, I told you, I can make Wellington better." Is that a hard question? To, I mean, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. No, 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 no. It's it's um, we have the wonderful Matariki Festival coming up. And if you went to it last year, um, you would have, the waterfront was absolutely packed. There was beautiful art and storytelling and food. Um, and this is during winter. Yep. It was really, really wonderful. So we've got that coming up. We've got the, um, the Festival of Arts is doing a light show in the Botanic Gardens in about two weeks' time. Beautiful. Okay. What do you want to say to the people of Wellington that are f- feeling really frustrated and feeling kind of like, low, you know, they, their friends might have lost jobs. You know, it's a tight old time. You've already explained that. What? Give us your last, you know, you're the mayor of the city. You're the one that's supposed to be trying to, uh, and I'm not saying you're not, mm. make us feel better. What yeah. are you going to say to people in Wellington? So that, I totally get it. And a lot of my friends who are public servants have lost their jobs as well. Um, it's really tough. We're in a cost of living crisis. And it's going to be like this for a bit. Um, but our city has been through tough times like that before. Um, when, we, when, when we've had a recession in the past. We just have to get through this together. It will get better. There is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and you have people who are deeply passionate about this city, including myself. We want it to be better. I'm not trying to just be difficult. I don't want to make life harder for people. I, I just want the city to be better. But know that I think most people know what we're all going through. And so we just have to be kind to each other. Tori Fano, thank you. I appreciate you coming in. I know it's a difficult time and it's a difficult situation to have to come in here and confront me and our callers, but it's great that you as Mayor have kept up the tradition that's been going on for many years in Wellington, coming in once a month. Appreciate it. Have a great next month and we'll catch you up next month. Well, hopefully we'll we'll go for that walk before the end of the month. Sounds good.